Hello students, welcome back to Tejas classes. I hope you are all doing very well and sorry for delay in posting the video. In today's session, we will be learning the Vedic age that is Aryan invention and early Vedic period of ancient history series. We have seen the Indus Valley civilization that is Arappan culture, what are the developments and how did the Arappan civilization has declined. Today, immediately after the Arappan civilization, we come across the very important civilization known as Vedic civilization or Vedic age. And this is the part 1 video where we will be learning about the early Vedic period. In part 2, we will be learning about the Rig Veda as well as the later Vedic period. So, before starting our session, please join our WhatsApp group and Telegram channel where you can find the daily quizzes on different topics as well as free PDF materials which are essential for your competitive examinations. Yeah, these are the topics which we are going to learn today. The first one is the Vedic age classification, sources of Vedic civilization and what are the various theories of Vedic civilization, how did Aryan invade into India that is Aryan invention, social, economic and political life of Indo-Aryans, Vedic age economy and what is the religion of the Vedic age. So, first briefly see the Indian history classification as we did in the earlier classes. We all know that Indian history is broadly classified into ancient, medieval and modern history. You all know the time periods, right? Now, see, again ancient history is classified into five parts. Up to this, up to now, we have completed the prehistory and Arappan civilization. And now we are going to enter into the Vedic age. Immediately after the decline of our Indus Valley civilization or during the decline of Indus Valley civilization, we the Vedic age has started by the advent of Indo-Aryans. So, after this, we will be learning about the Mahajan, Padas, Mahajan and Gupta in the next videos. See, Vedic age, the period is from 1500 to 600 BCE. Vedic age period is from 1500 to 600 BCE. And we have the Vedic age sub-classified into two periods. In the same way as we have classified the different time period, different stone ages, in the same way we have also subclassified this Vedic age into two periods. What are they? They are the early Vedic period and the later Vedic period. Early Vedic period ranges from 1500 to 1000 BCE, whereas later Vedic period from 1000 BC to 500 BC. Early Vedic period is also known as Rig Vedic period because the information regarding this early Vedic period was present in this Rig Veda and no other Vedas were present at this period. Only in the later Vedic period we come across various other Vedas such as Ajur Veda, Sama Veda, Atharva Veda, Ramayana, Mahabharata. These, are the, these both are the epics, right? So, the, we are going to learn in detail in part 2 about these Vedas, how many hymns are there and what are the subdivisions of these Vedas. The time being, we will concentrate on the Aryan invention. See, this is the uh, geographical map in the early Vedic period. So, first when the Aryans have come to India, they have settled in this area, okay, in the northwest. So, we will see the uh, consequent maps and the, that is related maps in the next slides. And in the later Vedic period, what happened? They have spread, okay. These people, the Indo-Aryans who have settled in India, have spread to wider extent. They have spread up to the Gangatic Plain. The Ganga River is here, you all know that. So, they have extended up to this region. We will look into detail about it. Don't worry. Now, let's see the sources of Vedic age. Guys, till now, up to the Indus Valley civilization, what we have learned. So, the sources are from... Please uh, answer your post your answers in the comment section, guys. If you know the answer, please post your answers in the comment section. Okay. So let me explain. I'll give you two minutes, two seconds of time. If you are new to this video, please like this video and subscribe our channel. And please do watch the previous videos also. So watching the uh, videos in middle will won't help you. It is same as the watching the movie from the interval. It doesn't give a clear understanding. Okay. If you are new to this channel, please like and subscribe our channel and please do the uh, previous videos and watch this video. And if you already subscribe this channel, please share to your friends and like the video. Now, sources of Vedic age. So I have already told you up to Indus Valley civilization that is IVC, we have come across that is the sources were what? Arctic crafts, sorry, sources were Arctic crafts and archaeology excavations, right? These are the sources from for the IVC. Uh, various historians have uh, uh, found out the evidences through the archaeology excavations. But coming to this Vedic age, 
we come to know about this vedic case through the literature that is a script was present here that is people know the art of writing people have learned the art of writing and they are inscribed on the paper that is text that is known as vedic literature so the main source of vedic age is the vedic literature and what is this vedas vedas are the large bodies of religious texts that is composed of vedic sanskrit and originated in ancient india okay these are the religious texts in the sanskrit language and originated in ancient india very 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 important guys there might be asking the what is the sources of vedic age and you might be uh, asking a questions in a, such a way that what is the sources of early vedic age and what is the sources of later vedic age also very very important okay now vedic literature is the most significant source of information about vedic civilization very very important vedic literature and vedic literature was evolved in the course of many centuries see this vedic literature was not written in a one month or a one day it was gone through many centuries and when did it actually started do the people of early vedic period know the art of writing no it was passed on from generation to generation by the word of mouth that is at that time also people can spell it out that they can read and it has transferred from one generation to another generation but actually when these scripts have been started uh, started writing these people have started writing in the 11th century okay the information has been passed on from one generation to other generation and the people from the 11th century have written this vedic text that is a vedic literature see vedic literature is again divided into two parts the first one is the shruti that is heard hearing sorry okay shruti is in means hearing that is then the early vedic people used to recite this avedas so our next generations they have remembered it they have heard it and they have remembered it so they have heard it the knowledge of the vedas that is the hymns have come by hearing so it is known as shruti such as vedas upanishad and it can't be translated very very important shruti can't be translated because for example if you know the gayatri mantra okay if anyone knows the gayatri mantra can gayatri mantra be changed even in hindi or even in telugu if it translated the actual meaning i mean the actual phrase can't be changed right it can't be written in english language or telugu language but the orally when we spell it out see it will be the same so that is that is the thing the vedas can't be translated and they are nothing but shruti and we have another vedic literature type that is smruti that is remembering so i have seen the instances i have remembered the instance so i will write now i can write in my own face that is puranas ramayana san mahabharatas the, the authors of these books that is epics have seen the instances they have remembered something they have put on something and this can be translated and modified according to our requirement see this can be modified and translated for example take the mahabharata you can find numerous books on mahabharata right there will be no particular text so some may write it in hindi some may write it in telugu some may take a movie on that so they make up changes according to that but the basic story is same but when they present it that is totally different but shruti can't be translated in you need to recite as it is that's the why uh, the brahmins they only can recite the shlokas and uh, you take any brahmin the shloka will be remain same and if mahabharata or are epics or ramayana puranas they differ from one person to other person so vedic literature is divided into shruti and smruti very very important guys please make a note of it and now you can see the rig veda the first and very oldest veda of indian subcontinent where we can find the literature the first time is the rig veda from this book only that is that is a veda only we came to know that indo aryan people existed and what are the developments how the people live so oldest text that is the oldest veda is known as rig veda and you can see i have given you a picture of it these are the scripts written on a paper of that time it is basically a bark of a tree guys a thin layer they have made the bark of it is into thin layer and i wrote on that when in the 11th century 
Vedasi. Again, we have basically four Vedas. What are they? Rig Veda, Ejur Veda, Sama Veda, Atharva Veda. We have four Vedas basically. And the early Vedic period, the information about early Vedic period is in Rig Veda. And later Vedic period from, from Ejur Veda, Sama Veda, Atharva Veda. We will learn about it in detail in the part 2. For the time being, please remember that we have the source of uh, Vedic civilization is from Vedic literature. Vedic literature is of two types, Shruti and Smruti. And we have four Vedas, that is Rig Veda, Ajur Veda, Sama Veda, Atharva Veda. And the source for the early Vedic civilization is Rig Veda. Very, very important. Okay. Now, many historians, many archaeologists have given different theories. But none has been proved. Okay. There was no proper evidence for proving it but many historians have given their own theories some believe that they have come from this place some believe that they have come from other place so based on that we have some theories the first one is a central asian theory mr professor max muller this is a very very important theory actually it was believed and uh, uh, followed by many people okay so professor max muller what he has said he has said that the indo aryans first lived in central asia and they were based on linguistic relation of words and concepts. What? Linguistic relation of words and concepts. What is mean by linguistic friends? Linguistic is nothing but the division based on the languages they speak. What this Max Muller has said? See, these Aryans have come from Central Asia. They speak all the common languages. So, they might be coming from those periods because Iranian languages, you, know, you might have seen this Indo-European, Indo-Iranian uh, Iranian language, Indo-Aryan languages, they all uh, will be very similar. So, based on that, he has thought that these people have come from Central Asia. Now, the European theory. So, this is given by William Jones, Gels, Schroeder and Morga. Okay, friends, actually this is the theories of Vedic age, but these are the theories of Aryan invention. Okay, not particularly Vedic age, it is regarding the Aryan invention. Okay. So, they have given theories that how Aryans have come to India, how they have settled. Okay. Now, see, according to these people, they have inhabited Europe. That is, these people are present in Europe and they have tra traveled from, from Europe to various places, according to European theory. And North Pole theory or Arctic theory, who has given it? The famous Indian freedom fighter, Balaganga Adar Tilak. So, what he has given, he has said that these Indo-Aryans basically belong to North Arctic region and they have come to India from there. And next comes the Tibet theory given by again Swami Dayanand Saraswati. Very, very important guys. So, what this Dayanand Saraswati has said, he has said that these people have come from Tibet. And comes the Indian theory, was given by A.C. Das, Gagannath Jha, D.S. Trivedi, I.D. Kalaspata. What they have said that these people are the basically Sindhu residents. These are Indians only. Means we have seen the Indus Valley civilization, right? What is the other name for Indus? In Hindi, we call it as Sindhu. So, according to Indian theory, these people have said that basically Aryans are Indians only as they have come from the Sindhu. That is the Indus Valley civilization. So, these are the theories of Vedic age. Very important, guys. Please make a note of it. I will be providing the PDF also. Yeah. Now you can see the world map and I have rounded off the Caucasus mountains. Just observe for two minutes. If you learn this map clearly guys, trust me, the entire Aryan invention will be completed. Only with the help of maps you can complete Aryan invention. Okay. So here are there both seas. Okay. There are two seas you can see uh, beside the Caucasus mountains. Can anyone please mention the names of the seas? If you know the answer, please mention in the comment. Immediately mention the comment section. Okay. See, around this Caucasus mountains, we have two seas. One is the Caspian Sea, and one is the Black Sea. Where they are present? Where they are present? Mention in the comment section. Okay. So, these are the two seas. These are the Caucasus mountains. We have our India here. Okay. And this is the total Europe and Asia. This is Asia and this is the Europe continent. You all know this. This is a basic one. Okay. Now, why I have given you that? See, majority of people and historians believe that these Indo-Aryans have come from Central Asia. What is the Central Asia, guys? This entire area is known as 
Central Asia. Okay, and previously it is also known as Eurasia. Why? Let me write it clearly for you. So this entire place is known as Eurasia because this is Asia, this is Europe. It used to be one 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 place. So it is known as Eurasia. And these Indo-Aryans have come from this place to India. We have two civilizations parallelly developing while the Indus Valley civilization was developing in India. Okay. Similarly, we have Indus Valley civilization development in India. In other places also, there will be a civilization developing. So when we uh, learn about the world history, we'll come to we'll come across that. Uh, what are the civilizations in other parts of the world? For this Aryan invention, we we should know two major civilizations that has developed as a part of proto-european or proto-iranian culture okay initially people used to live in this place around the caucasus mountains and somewhere here okay and the particular civilizations there are two major civilizations one is the andranova culture and one is the here yeah, somewhere here around here we have bmac you might ask him, sir, what is this BMAC? It seems like a Bangalore Metropolitan Corporation. No, BMAC, the full form is Bactria Margiana Archaeology Complex. What? Bactria Margiana and Archaeology Complex. So Bactria is a place in present day. It is in Afghanistan, somewhere around here, and Margiana is a place in Turkmenistan or Uzbekistan. So around these areas, these Indo-Aryans used to live. Okay, and I'll tell you there was existed one more culture also known as Sinasta culture, the first culture in the Turkey somewhere around here. Okay, from here these uh, Indo-Iranian people have they have migrated have separated from different places, and from here they have went into the BMAC, some have went into the Europe, some have went into the Andronova culture, and from there they have started. Let me clear off this. Okay. This is the starting point number one, Sinasta culture, and from here they have tra traveled to Europe. Some people have traveled to this part. Some people have traveled to uh, Andronova culture. Some people have traveled to this uh, BMAC, B Bactria and Margiana complex. Okay, and from here they have again traveled back to Persia. I have already told you these Indo-Iranian people are semi-nomadic people. There are pastoral people have practiced the pastoralism means they had their cattle rearing. They basically depends on the cattle rearing. They move from one place to other places. When the resources are depleted in one place, they move on to the other place. They don't have a permanent settlement. Okay. See again, they have started coming to the Persia the second from Persia. Guys, what is a Persia? Can you please name the new name of Persia? Yes, Iran. So they have traveled towards Iran and finally they have entered into the india okay and we have one mountains guys here yeah these are the himalayas you all know that here also we have one mountains what are they called previously now we have borders all those previously between the mountains they should they they they, they, they there existed a way which we call is a pass now also what passes passes are nothing but way between the himalayas to go from one uh, to pass the himalaya that are known as passes so we have hindu kush mountains hindu kush mountains at this pass at this place and the pass is known as khyber pass so after these indo aryans from iran they have started entering india by passing these hindu kush mountains and khyber pass and entered this northwestern part of india this part so uh, you all know that in the, uh, when you learned about the Indus Valley civilization that this was a united India, Pakistan and India used to be the same and in this area Hindu Kush mountains were present and these people have entered India and started settling in this place. This is the basic thing, basic way how the Indo-Aryans have entered into the India. Now I have given you the clear map, see here you can see the Black Sea, Caspian Sea, Aral Sea okay andronova culture existed around this area okay and this uh, bmac around this area uzbekistan turkmenistan has already told you right and sinasta culture here 
the first place from here and they have migrated to here and from there they have entered on the Persia and then finally into the India. Now you come, you, you might have get a clear idea, right? See, now I also given you the, again a, the bigger map of it. You can see the Margiana bacteria, BMAC. BMAC archaeology complex, you have seen, right? So, where it is present, see here. This is the Iran, this is the Russia. Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan. So from here, I have told you from Turkey is in Asta culture, they have come to these places and from Bacteria and Margiana and they have started into the Iran. From Iran, they have entered into our India. Here you can see the Indus river, right? See this one. And this one also sees Caucasus Mountains, Black Sea, Caspian Sea, Aral Sea. So these are the basic areas where the Indo Aryans used to live before entering into the India. Now, you can see the bigger map of this Aryan invention, how many places they have traveled, okay. So, first one is the Antalonia language, see, this is the Turkey, near the Turkey, they have moved to the Sinasta, see, Sinastas, this is Antonova culture, okay, and then Iranians, you can see here, some other people have also moved to different places, but will concentrate only on the Indo-Aryans, these Iranians, and then they have come, entered into the India, that particular period is known as Vedic culture, that is a Vedic civilization has started. In this way, the RN has been, and uh, is Indo Aryan. Yeah, now let us see the detailed flowchart of how Aryans have come into the India along with the different culture names of different parts of the world. First, the Sinasta culture, where it is, it is the north of Caspian Sea. Just now we have seen in the map. So, from 2200 BC to 1800 BC, this particular Sinasta culture has developed. And who were the people? Indo Aryans and Iranians were the part of this scenario, uh, Sinasta culture. Okay, after living for a, but, uh, this period of time, they have started migrating from one place to other. As I have said, these Indo-Aryan people are basically a semi-nomadic people, okay, and dependent on pastoralism. So, from Sinasta, they have moved to the Andronova, okay, where it is in Central Asia, near these uh, Black Sea and Caspian Sea, okay, uh, above the uh, Black Sea, that is near uh, Aral Sea, near Aral, Aral Sea, this Andronova culture existed. So, from Sinasta, they have moved to the Antonova culture from 2000 to 900 BC, they lived here. And after that, what happened? There were Indo-Aryans and Iranians, both the people. Iranians have been splitted, they have got separated and Indo-Aryans have moved to a new place known as BMAC. Indo-Aryans have moved to a new place, BMAC, it is a Bactria and Mariana archaeology complex which is in South Central Asia. Now, we have seen where it is guys. Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, we have see, just seen the map, right? So, the, who have traveled? Indo-Aryans have traveled to this place and this Iranian people have traveled to Iran. At that time, what is the name of the Iran? It is Persia. So, after this, see, these Iranian people have moved to the Persia, Iran and these uh, Indo-Aryan people have moved to Antolia, that is Mitanni. It is the place in Turkey, the present day Turkey okay and after moving after moving to different places gradually they have started entering into the iran uh, iran either is persia and finally enter india through the khyber and bolan passes entered india through khyber and bolan passes these are the passes of hindu kush mountains passes of hindu kush mountains and first where did the india that is the indo aryans have lived they lived in eastern Afghanistan, Pakistan, Punjab and fringes of western UP. This uh, particular area is also known as land of seven rivers. We will see in next slide why it is called the land of seven rivers. Okay. And very, very important. See, after coming to the India, there were the people also living in India. What the inhabitants of uh, India are called? They are known as Dravidians. So, these Indo-Aryans after coming to India got settled in this uh, north, northwestern area that is the Punjab, Pakistan, fringes of UP. They have met with the Dravidian people and they started fighting with them. Okay? Aryans, that is the Indo-Aryans were very strong. They, they, they are believed to be a masculine people and these uh, Dravidians are uh, termed as this feminine people. Okay, So, they were very strong. They were having the advanced weapons. They were having the horse chariots also. So, they started attacking these Dravidian people and consequently they have made their dynasty, they have made their kingdoms in India. We will see step by step how they have done that. Okay. For the time being, see, this is how the Aryan has invaded into India. The first is Sinasta culture, second Andronova, 
third one is the BMAC and then they have entered into Persia then they have entered in India where they have settled in Eastern Afghanistan, Eastern Afghanistan, Pakistan, Punjab and fringes of Western UP. This land of seven rivers is very very important guys. Sapta Sindhu. It is also known as Sapta Sindhu. Now, see, I have given you the map for you. This is the Caspian Sea. North of Caspian Sea what you have? Sinasta culture. Okay. This Sinasta culture people uh, have already told you they have been uh, the uh, Indo, that is Indo Aryans and Iranians have been uh, separated. So Iranians have moved to these uh, around these Caucasus mountains and they moved to Iran. And these uh, uh, Indo Aryan people have moved to the uh, India through the Hindu Kush mountains. So they are first uh, first place where they have lived near the northwestern part of India. Subsequently they moved to the this plain. What is this? We have one famous river of India, guys. What it is known as Ganga. So this after settling down in uh, this uh, northwestern part for living for uh, some period they moved again to the Gangetic plain and after that they also started moving expanding their territory to the southern side okay so this is basically the Indo-Aryan invention you, sorry yeah here you can see the Khyber Pass and Hindu Kush mountains right? these are the Himalayas these are India here you can see the Khyber Pass and Hindu Kush mountains very very important guys Numerous times this question has been asked. Indo Aryans have entered India through which pass and through which mountains? Okay, very very important. Now, see. Can you recognize this map, guys? Have you seen it somewhere? I have explained it clearly in the previous sessions. Can you rec uh, remember in which session I have explained you? Yes, Indus Valley Civilization. I have explained about the Indus River tributaries, right? Yes. These Indo Aryan peoples also have first settled in this place only. That's the reason we have a theory that these Indo Aryans have come to India and attacked the Indus, that is, Arapan civilization people. Okay, we have the theory that this is the main reason because we have found the traces that Indo Aryans first lived in this Arapan people. But at the time when Indo Aryans have come to India, this Arapan civilization was totally declined. Indus Valley civilization was totally declined. And why we call it as Sapta Sindhu? Because they have settled around these seven rivers. They have settled around these seven rivers. The first one is the Indus River, and we have five tributaries of Indus. We all know that. Yeah. And one uh, other river, see, lived in geographical area covered by Eastern Africa, Punjab, and fringes of Western Uttar Pradesh. We have already seen this. And we have Indus, Sindhu River, and Kuba, Kabul. Okay, these are new and old names of the rivers. And what are the five tributaries of Indus? We have Jhelum, Bees, Chenab, Ravi, Saltach. So these are the various tributaries of uh, Indus River, that is the Sindhu River. And at that time, they have, they have different names. For Jhelum, it has been called as Vitasta, Bees, Vipasa, Chenab, Askini, Ravi, Parushini, Satlach, Satudri. So, Please make a note of this name, guys. Very, very important. If you are preparing for UPSC, then you might come across this, this type of questions. What are the previous names of the rivers of the Sapta Sindhu? And also, it may, you may come across the question that what are the, choose the uh, rivers which are the part of the Sapta Sindhu. Okay. Very, very important. Now, Indo Aryans have come to India. They have settled in northern, uh, northwest part of India, northwest part of India, near the land of seven rivers, that is Sapta Sindhu. Then, let's see how the Indo Aryans were when they came to India. Okay. And first, let us know the meaning of the word Arya. Indo Arya. Okay. Arya means noble. People belong to a noble family. So, meaning of the Arya is the people belong to a noble family. That is, simply they are noble persons. And Aryans were a semi-nomadic tribal society with a pastoral economy. What? They were a semi-nomadic tribal society with a pastoral economy. Means they are basically tribes. There are semi-nomadic people move from one place to other places in search of food, and they uh, live with the pastoral economy. What does it mean by pastoral economy, guys? See, they used to domesticate the cows and various animals. And with the help of their products, that is the milk, with the meat, they used to live with the help of that. And in order to uh, survive, I mean, uh, in order to grow that animals, they will move from one place to another place in search of food. And they spoke Sanskrit and Indo-European language. What? Indo-Aryans people used to speak Sanskrit. 
succeeded everywhere because they had horse chariots and weapons see wherever these indo aryan people go success was on their side because they were having the horse chariots and the powerful advanced weapons okay advanced weapons don't think of these nuclear weapons or technology automation so we generally we have this in stone age in the uh, indus valley civilization we used this wooden and stone but they were using the some kind of copper and bronze metals which are very sharp okay so fought with local habitants called dasas and dasyus initially when they have come to india they have started started only they have started fighting with these uh, people who are already living in india so one people on group is known as dasas means early aryan so aryan they have not come at once they have come in different time periods so initially these very early aryans have come they have fought with these people and they are known as dasas and also dasyus another group these are the original inhabitants of india people they are basically from india who are dravidians fought among themselves also what there are two types of battles you can uh, c- come by uh, c- come to know first one is they have fought with local habitants that is the dasas and dasyus and they have fought among themselves also okay and one is the one battle is very famous for this they have fought among themselves and very famous battle we are going to look now aryans were divided into tribes what aryans were divided into various tribes here you can see the people indo aryan people they are moving from one place to another place semi nomadic tribal society here you can see the horse chariot see they are having advanced weapons they are also wearing the helmets also can you see here i think uh, your uh, picture is not clear for you and have you mentioned one important symbol in this uh, picture the second one this one on the horse can you see this swastik symbol yes very very oldest symbol of the indian subcontinent in the indian history is this swastik symbol very important for hindu religion in this early vedic period only now we'll see the how was the political life of this rigvedic people rigvedic people confused because i have already told you the basic source of this early vedic period is from rigveda so that's why we have called it as rigvedic people and you, i have given you a picture Okay, what are you observing in this picture, guys? Please tell me. See, this type of situation you can observe in generally in the villages, yeah. In the villages, same this type of situation as a village head will be sitting, and they are, all the villagers will be discussing their problems with him, yeah. So similarly, there was a similar political life that is the arrangement on the Rig Vedic people also. There used to be a village head. and where various people have come come to him for explaining their problem and looking for a solution so then we have the heads of the rigvedic people and the every people i mean the tribe entire tribe the locality people who are living in that particular area that colony people are known as tribe and generally we call them tribe now also in the rigvedic people they call them as jana okay and the entire tribe they used to call as jana and the tribal chief the head of that particular uh, colony also is known as rajan or gopati is known as rajan gopati gopati means protector of cows gopati means protector of cows so why uh, 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 there there should be a protector of cows uh, king you, you generally know that king he used to rule the kingdom he used to rule the people but in this vedic people uh, vedic age cow was utmost importance and the king usually take care of the cows there were no land revenues i mean there were no property issues at that time land was not much important and the much important thing was cow and the trading that is a, the economy that business was basically depended on the cow only and this tribal chief used to take care of the cows and who is the chief what is the chief king called mahishi chief king was called as mahishi next administration coming to the administration we have purohit now also we call him purohit come you might have come across these names he is the priest simple way pujari okay he is the priest he is a brahmin next the sanani army chief army chief is known as sanani and the territorial officer the territorial officer is known as brajpati and the village leader gramini 
you uh, who generally looks after the village issues and he will be the in uh, uh, first to fight for the issues of the people he is known as gramini title officer vajrapati army chief sanani priest as purohita now uh, coming to the assemblies now we have lok sabha rajya sabha panchayat samiti municipal corporation municipal administration municipality right so in the rigvedic period we also have a similar way but the names are different we call it as sabha the smaller body small group of people used to meet and discuss their problems it is known as sabha and samiti it was a folk assembly with a rajan who is this rajan head of the tribe okay some folk people they used to conduct some meetings they used to make some changes that is known as samiti and next comes the vidata tribal assembly with the functions okay they used to gather at one place for celebrating any ritual, any festivals of that period okay next comes the gana assembly or troop gana is the assembly or troop of this military people but there were no particular military people over that time the people that uh, people are belong to that tribe only the men usually they were acting as a military force now tribal military group see what are the tribal military groups are called they are known as vrata sarada gana names of the tribal military groups of uh, rigvedic people are vrata sarada and gana and the charity is used so i have already told you they use the horse chariots and what other things they have used apart from that while traveling in the chariot they use the varma they are the coats of the mail and sipra or sironastra helmets guys now we don't there is a strict regulation traffic rules regulation that we should wear helmet compulsory but where does actually the use of helmet has come from it has come from this vedic period only see the first helmet was used in the rig vedic people and it has called as sipra or sinostra sironastra and asi swords are known as asi arrows bow and arrows arrows are known as hanas and bows are known as hilianos okay guys these terms are very very important after this please take a screenshot of it please be aware of the, uh, make a note of these uh, names very important okay now no taxes voluntary offerings bali there were no taxation system at that time so people voluntarily gave their offerings to the rajan for the development of the particular tribe and they are known as bali okay what they were used known as that offerings were no used to call as bali the tribal kingdoms okay and what are the various kingdoms present at that time bharatas matsyas yadus purus okay these are the names of the kingdoms present at the time of rig vedic age or early vedic period and you can see this name guys bharatas have you heard this name which is very similar to us yes our indian name that is a bharat has been taken from this particular kingdom only after referring this particular kingdom the name has come that is a bharat has come from this bharatas kingdom very very important hmm? now comes the battle of 10 kings dasarajna very 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 important okay i have already explained you indo aryans used to fought uh, two types of battles one is the they fought among themselves they fought with the dasus and dasyas so dasus and dasyas are nothing but dasu is the early aryans and dasyas are the inhabitants of india and this particular battle of 10 kings belongs to the battle which they have fought among themselves Indo Aryans have been divided into different tri uh, tribes. I have already explained you. So these particular tribes might have different leaders. The leaders have differences. So this will actually led to this battle. Okay. So why it is called as Dasarajna? Dasa means ten in Sanskrit. Dasha means ten, and Rajna means I have already told you head of the tribe, king. That's why the name has come Battle of Ten Kings. And who has fought it? Does the ten kings have fought among themselves? No. there was a famous king known as bharata chief sudas see this bharata's dynasty king sudas he was the king at that time and he was a grandson of divodasa he was a grandson of divodasa was a famous king when we learn about in detail about this uh, vishwamitra and vasishta there you can see the uh, divodasa name so he was uh, actually the sudas was head of this bharata kingdom he alone so he alone fought with the 10 tribes he alone fought with the 10 kings okay 
and what are they five are the panchajana purus okay basically these uh, indo aryans have been divided into five tribes i have already explained you they are known as panchajana means five tribes they are also known as purus and other five tribes okay other non local tribe that is the non aryan tribes these panchajana purus are other aryan tribes and the other five tribes belong to non aryan tribes and i have given you the name of this panchajana that is the aryan tribes yadu truvasha puru anu dravyu so names of the aryan tribes okay so basically the battle between the sudas as well as the 10 tribes the kings of the 10 tribes aryan plus non aryan okay so why actually this battle took place why actually this battle took place see it happened on banks of parushini river ravi river ravi is a tributary of indus i have explained you the name of parushini yes ravi is also known as parushini it happened on the banks of parushini river so now why it has happened what is the reason for it the main reason lied between the differences between the vasishta and vishwamitra here comes the great sages vasishta and vishwamitra so majority of people might have heard this name but many people don't know what is the actual story of it if you want to know about the battle of 10 kings why dasarajana has been so popular we should know the story of this vasishta and vishwamitra okay first let's see the vasishta and vishwamitra story in brief one second guys yeah now you can see a different pictures you might be wondering why what sir has given the cartoon pictures it looks like a cartoon book yes this is a basically a storytelling book i have collected the pictures from it only okay here you can see then the first picture you can see the one king and one sage and one cow okay this sage is known as vasishta there used to be a famous sage whose name is vasishta and this king name is kaushika name of the king is kaushika from a bharata dynasty only okay and there used to be a cow what happened actually please listen to this story carefully there used to be there used to live a cow which is very powerful okay it has immense powers and this particular vasishta used to feed the many poor people with the help of this cow only this cow used to give food okay when you see the old movies you can see that it is known as kamadenu cow is also known as kamadenu because it gave food continuously and it feeded the many poor people and vasishta was the head of i mean owner of this cow during uh, for his penance god has offered him some powers as in the form of a cow after seeing this cow this kaushika this particular king asked the vasishta to give the cow to him but this vasishta has ignored it yes not accepted for it but vasishta there is a kaushika has got angry on this he tried to uh, take the cow with him and he has dragged the cow but this cow with the vasishta has used his powers and make the cow invisible made the cow invisible uh, this kaushika this particular king got angry and he also wanted the same powers as vasishta has he has started making the meditation he has started doing the meditation so shiva has given him some powers okay shiva shiva has given him some powers when he tried to attack this uh, uh, vasishta with the help of powers given by shiva there also he got defeated this king again got defeated in the hands of vasishta then again he went for the meditation for the penance where he has got some more powers from the god and in order to get this uh, Uh, growing vishwamitra see this kaushika he has re- uh, named uh, uh, he has renamed as vishwamitra okay and this particular kaushika this king no after go after doing the meditation and for penance he has named uh, he has been named as vishwamitra so this vasishta the old and old sage he has tried to distract the vishwamitra and he has some menaka for him okay 
yes and menaka to distract him from him and the this uh, particular uh, vishwamitra got distracted and this vasishta has retained his powers but at, after some time this uh, Vish, uh, vasishta has realized his mistake this vishwamitra has realized his mistake and again attained again went for the pinan again went for the deep meditation he has got supreme powers then this uh, vasishta has realized that this vishwamitra is really a powerful person and he has got some immense powers the, this is the story actually there was a dispute between how the dispute has arisen between the vishwamitra and vasishta for the cow okay you have learned a long story right the simple thing vishwamitra and vasishta fought for the cow so now you know the story of vasishta and vishwamitra and the reason for their uh, fighting is the cow that is the kamdenu so okay leave it out leave it aside now let's concentrate on this sudha he was the king of bharata chief we all know that what he actually did he want he actually uh, try to make this 10 uh, tribes as them slaves tribes of other people he has attempted to attack these uh, tribal people other tribes and asked them to move away that is go back to their places which where they have come from they have all, he has asked them to go to iran or they go to iraq so where they have come from these people have got angry they have consulted each other and we have already seen that indo aryans have been uh, divided into five tribes known as panchajana so these panchajana tribe there is a five tribes of aryan as well as five tribes of non aryan have combined together and these people were backed by one once famous saint who is he? these people were backed means these tribes were supported by one famous sage he is nothing but mr vishwamitra okay and why he supported this uh, tribal people why vishwamitra supported this mid tribal people because vasishta was the chief priest of this bharata kingdom vasishta was the chief priest of this bharata kingdom and he was uh, giving suggestions to sudhas in order to take revenge on vasishta he, he supported this 10 tribes that is the 10 tribe five panja uh, panchajanas that is purus and other non aryan tribes combined with the vishwamitra attacked the bharata chief sudhas but this sudhas was very powerful you don't imagine he was very powerful he alone fought with this 10 tribes and he has won the battle what who has won the battle mr sudha that is the bharata chief he has won the battle after fighting with 10 kings so imagine only one king has fought with the 10 with 10 kings very very brave and very powerful person after this what happened there were these aryan people also present in this 10 tribes right i have already told you see this bharata chief this panchajana that is purus aryan tribes have combined with the bharata that is sudha they have made they have made an agreement these people have said that we will also be joining with you we have no strength to again do a battle with you so we will be joining with you so these people do bharata kingdom and the panchajanas they have combined and formed a kingdom dynasty known as kurus okay they formed a dynasty known as kurus who has formed bharata chief sudhas that the bharata kingdom and the panchajana five aryan tribes they have made they have formed a dynasty named as kurus and over a period of time these kurus again combined with one another tribe known as panchalas so there used to be other kingdom known as panchala these kurus again they have combined with these panchalas and they have started building their dynasties they have started building their kingdoms so this is the battle of 10 kings known as dasarajana the basically battle between the bharata chief sudhas and the 10 tribes five aryan tribes and five non aryan tribes and why i have explained you the story of vishwamitra and vasishta vishwamitra was a supporter of these 10 tribes whereas the vasishta was the chief priest of this bharata kingdom okay finally they have formed into kurus and again uh, combined with panchalas they started their expanding their kingdom to the southern side see now you have seen the understood the story of vasishta and vishwamitra now you can see the map of that particular period you can see the various dynasties you can see the panchala kingdom see here you can see the panchala it is a kuru okay this kuru and panchala they have combined together and they have formed this kuru see very big dynasty okay and you can also see the various dynasties kosala dynasty okay we we'll learn about in detail in the next video this is a basically political map of that period now social life of aryans how aryans used to live kinship was a basis of social structure 
kinship was the basis of social structure. What is kinship, guys? Blood relations means they have given importance to the blood relations. They have the built the family based on these blood relations only. That is, my son, my son's son. In the similar way, we build our families now. Similarly, kinship was the basis of social structure, and basic unit was kula. Basic unit was kula. That is nothing but the family nowadays. And kulapa was the head of the family. Kulapa is the known as the head of the family. Very important, guys. When you learn up from this time of period, that is from Vedic age, you should know the names. That is the names which they have called. But maybe in the economy, maybe the political, maybe the social. Okay. So we have uh, these three factors: political life, social life, economic life. of on every kingdoms and every time periods so very important you should know these names okay and family was a part of larger grouping called vis or clan family in total many number of families combined together they are known as vis or clan one or more clans made jana or tribe c we have seen this uh, aryas group of people known as tribe okay this uh, Vis or clan, they have combined to be, become jana or tribe, and jana was the largest social unit. So these social unit used to have a particular name. In the same way, we have Bharatas, right? We have Bharatas, we have Purus, we have what Kurus, we have Panchalas. These are the names names of this uh, social unit known as jana or tribe. And family was patriarchal. What is it, my patriarchal? Father favorite. Okay, nothing but the father. But you, you you know the names of paternal, maternal, right? So the same way it was based on paternal. Institution of marriages were established. What marriages were done according to some uh, particular format. And no examples of child marriages. Child marriages were not done at that period. Instance of remarriage and liberate and marriages were usually monogamous. Marriages were usually monogamous. social life was not divided on caste lines and occupation was not based on birth so there was no caste system followed though they were the people based on the, the the division was based on the work culture what they are doing that is brahmins used to do the religious things and these kshatriyas that is the uh, army people are known as kshatriya they used to uh, participate in the war matters and the shudras shudras the shudras are nothing but the inhabitants that is the early aryans dasus and dasyas right we have seen this so these aryan people are very dominant we have seen them so these have made these people as shudra shudra means these are the slaves of this particular people aryan people the lowest class and consciousness of physical appearance term varna was used for the color okay see the racism is started from this particular period aryans were used to be white and very height okay they but these uh, uh, inhabitants of india dravidians used to be very short and black so they have mentioned the varna name in the rigveda many times let me clear off this yeah you can see the various caste systems of early vedic period yeah you can see the brahmin this people is a warrior right he is known as kshatriya okay and yeah you can see the herders farmers merchants craft people so these people are generally known as vaishyas and the slaves it is a farm workers servants laborers these are known as shudras yeah 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 you can see the highest community is the brahmins next come the kshatriyas and the vaishyas yeah you can see this these people are non aryans guys these all the people are aryans these people are non aryans the other people living in india okay so i already told you initially these indoarians are divided into five tribes but after that what happened after the battle of uh, dasarajna they have combined with the bharata kingdom only so now they were totally aryans people at one side and non aryans people at another side and these non aryan people were seen as a slaves for this aryan people see here this is the non aryan people this is the aryan people He used to dominate and treat him as a slave okay there was Uh, no respect was given to these people now rig vedic economy what was the economy what was a trade medium okay pastoral and cattle rearing people pastoral and cattle rearing people we all know that they indulged in agriculture yes they, or the cow was important most of the wars are fought for the sake of cows see we have seen the 
story of Vishwamitra and Vasishta. Why they have fought? For the cow. And these uh, Bharata kingdom with the uh, various kings also used to fight due to only for the cow. Some uh, one particular king used to uh, steal the uh, cows from other kingdom and that king used to uh, do the fight with him. Okay, that rise to various battles and because of only cow. Gold coins were used for trade. See, here gold for coin, the first coinage was introduced. The gold coins were known as Nishika at that time. Gold coins were known as Nishika. And artisans enjoyed special status. What do you mean by artisans, guys? Artisans are nothing but the people who make chariots, who are the carpenters, painters, who make the various ornaments. These are known as artisans. And they enjoy special status. That is, they have given respect for them. And chariot racing and dice gambling were popular games. Chariot racing and dice gambling were popular games. When you see the Mahabharata, all those things, there you can see the dice game, right? The term Ayas was used for copper and bronze. So, what they used to call copper and bronze? They used to call Ayas. In Indus civilization, they don't even know the name of it. In up to the Indus Valley civilization, they don't know the name of copper and bronze. But they have used it. They don't have actually had a name. But coming to this uh, Vedic period, they are named it as Ayas. Iron was not used. Very, very, very important, guys. They had horse chariots. They had weapons. But iron was not known to this early Vedic period. Indus Valley also, they don't know the iron. But so, iron was not invented till that period. Iron was not known to this early Vedic people. Here you can see the various coins, Nishikas of that time. Okay, excavated from various archaeology sites. And here you can see the importance of, they use it for the cattle rearing, they use it for the agriculture. They also use it for as a, uh, they have treated the cow as a religious thing. Rig Vedic religion. Okay, Rig Veda. See, religion is very common, guys. In every age also, they have followed some other religion. In a Vedic age, Indus Valley civilization, we have seen the, uh, mother goddess they have worshipped mother goddess they have worshipped Pashupati Mahadev right we have seen the symbols in it so in Rig Vedic also they have uh, worshipped uh, many people but what is the difference is that in this Rig Vedic we don't have any idol worship there were no temples there were no idols then what they have worshipped they have worshipped natural forces like earth fire wind rain and thunder there, there is also a term nowadays we use it as a panchabhuta right so they have worshipped these natural forces and they have personified natural forces into many gods and worshipped them means they are given a human shape uh, human shape to these forces so they have made some pictures for the earth god they have made for the fire and they have started worshipping them and worshipped in open air through yagnas very very important there were no temples there were no uh, idols then how they worship they worshipped them through the Yagnas, they started offering the thing to the gods to the form of Yagnas. That is the uh, doing the Yagnas. I will give you a picture for that. Okay, you all might be knowing the Yagnas, Homam. Yeah, see, no temple or idol worship. Worship gods for children, Pashu, food, and wealth. Generally, we all why we worship the gods. Similarly, they also worship for the same. They wanted the children, they wanted the cattle, they wanted the food, they wanted the wealth. Mentioned some demigods also. Okay, they have mentioned some demigods, Gandharvas. Gandharvas means eminent music personalities. Okay, god of music, we can term it as like this. Apsaras, okay, and Vishwadevas and Aryamans. So these are known as a semi, that is the demigods of that particular period. Now I have given you the pictures of various gods which these people have personified. Means actually these earth, fire, wind, rain, they don't have particular shape. But what for the purpose of worship? They have personified them. They have given him the human image. Here you can see the, the most important god which the Aryans worship is the Indra. Okay? He, is the he is the greatest god of the Aryans. He is also called, called as Purandara. That is a breaker of forts. He is also called as Magavan. He is also known as Brutahan. Okay? He is a very important god and he is also regarded as a rain god for responsible for causing rain. And next comes the Agni, god of the fire. Second most important god of this Aryan, that is a early Vedic period. Next comes the Surya, the sun, 
one of several elemental gods who it is the god of sun next soma is the king of gods is the king of plants special god for the brahmanas okay this god is particularly termed as a god for the plants and special god for the brahman people and next comes the wind god vayu so they have worshiped the wind in the in the, uh, in the name of vayu vayu god okay next comes the yama the god of death yama dharma raja we use nowadays right the same way yama dharma raja so they have used they have worshiped the yama and they have also worshiped the varuna he is the god of personified water means he looked after rita cosmic order generally he is regarded as the highest of all rigvedic gods varuna is regarded as the highest of all rigvedic gods and next comes the vedic god rudra okay he is known as vedic god rudra so these are the various gods which the early vedic people have mentioned but i have given you only some uh, god names in total there are 33 devas means 33 god they used to worship so the for exam point of view these are these are only needed uh, if you want you can refer to the other 33 gods also yeah that's it all guys we have finished the early vedic period our in invention political social and economic life of vedic age so what we have seen let us revise faster see we have seen the vedic age classification early vedic age later vedic age we have studied early vedic age uh, we have studied the early vedic age in this uh, session we are going to learn the about the later vedic age in the part 2 we have seen the sources of vedic civilization what is the main source of vedic civilization vedic literature and theories of vedic civilization who has given max max muller has given right bar gangadhar tilak has given and we have seen the theories of vedic civilization uh, where did the indians have come from from the various historians and archaeologists and how did the aryans have come from which place from uh, uh, what are the cultures andronova culture and bmac culture they have come to the iran and from there they have entered into india through the khyber pass and the hindu kush mountains and we have seen the social economic and political life of india aryans how are they and what are the different names for them for the people some of these group of people what is the head of the tribe what is the Uh, who is the head of the tribe who is the and we have seen the caste classification of the early vedic period also we have seen the vedic age economy yeah we have learned about the gold coins and the cow is the most important trade barrier and vedic age religion different gods for vedic age people okay so i hope you are, you have enjoyed the session got the required information so i prepared with a great care guys please see the video uh, don't skip anything we will be are going to learn about the later vedic period in the next classes in the next session we will going to learn about the later vedic period by which we will complete complete vedic period and then after we can go to the mahajanapada period if you have liked the video please share like and subscribe our channel okay and please share it to your friends also guys thanks for watching have a good day bye